another day, another inspiring story. Welcome to Proudly Able. My name is Ratito Mchail and I'll be your host. Today we are hosting Prudence Mabena, who has refused a disability to pull it down. And Prudence is also blessed with a melodious voice. Prudence, welcome to Proudly Able. Thank you. Perhaps you might start by giving us a brief background about yourself. My name is Prudence Mabena. I was born in Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world. When I was born, I became the eighth wonder of the world because I was born with a disability. My disability is called arthrogryposis. Arthrogryposis involves a variety of non-progressive conditions that are characterized by multiple joint stiffness and involves muscle weakness found throughout the body at birth. It is a rare disorder occurring in one out of every 3,000 live births. It basically affects bones and muscles, uh, some of uh, the body's, body parts um, are twisted and muscles become weak as one grows up. In most African cultures, children born with disabilities are regarded as a case and an embarrassment to the family. Prudence birth led to the breaking up of your parents' marriage. When I was born, my paternal family uh, pointed fingers to my maternal family saying that um, I was a child from prostitution and uh, my mother's family wanted to bewitch me and there were so many stories. Anyway, so that ended up making my family, my, my mom and dad separate at the age of three months. Prudence's paternal grandmother wanted her dead as she thought she was an embarrassment to her family. Faced with such a difficult situation, her mom and maternal grandmother embraced her with both hands as a blessing from the Lord. My mother decided to go to my to my grandmom, my maternal grandmom. Before she left, she was told by my paternal grandmom not to breastfeed or feed me so that I could die because I was an embarrassment to my paternal uh, family. So my mom couldn't do that. And thank God, my grandmother accepted me and she said, you know what, my child, you have come with this, uh, ch this child of yours. All, uh, all that I want you to do is to believe in her. One day she's going to be a blessing. At the age of seven, Prudence was taken back to his father so that she could be sent to school. But that marked the beginning of her ordeal at the hands of her stepmom. At the age of seven, I then went to my dad to live with my dad so I could start attending school. Uh, that's when I went to Victor back to Victoria Falls town. My dad had remarried. I stayed with my stepmom. I lived with my stepmom. My stepmother, first days, or I would rather say first years, she was a good lady, but I don't know what happened to her because uh, there are times when she would be so mean in the sense that even when I asked to, I asked her to take me to the, to the bathroom, to the restroom, she would say she's busy. And so I, developed uh, this fear in me whereby I couldn't ask her anymore. I would stay for days without going to the restroom. So I'll just try and keep it to myself and maybe jump two, three days. Then the fourth day I would ask her and I would see that she was somehow uh, accepting it or appreciating that at least I'm not going to the restroom every day. So those were some of the challenges that I went through as a child. As if the ordeal from a stepmother was not enough, Prudence faced a lot of stigmatization from the community. Some challenges that I faced when I was growing up, there were people that would speak 
in front of me like say that I'm a, I'm an animal you know they would they would give so many so many uh, they would give me so many names those were some of the challenges that I would face but above that these things did not put me down no matter what people said about me I would tell myself that my granny said I'm a blessing so I have to be a blessing. I have to show the world one day that I am a blessing for sure. When Prudence turned nine, she was sent to live and learn at the King George VI School for Children with Disabilities. King George VI School is where I learned. Um, that's where I discovered my talent. I remember when I was at uh, school, there is this other friend of mine, uh, Pamela Ndi, she used to push me around. She loved pushing me around. So one, uh, one of the days when I had gone out of class, she was pushing me by the corridor and I started singing. I sang and then one of the teachers came out and said, who, is, who has been singing? And so I, 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 I was afraid to say it's me. <laughs> So she kept on asking and I ended up saying it's me and then she said I, th I thought I was in trouble because I thought I was making noise so she told me that I I needed to come to her class in the afternoon I thought I was going to be beaten up so when I went um, in the afternoon she was um, she had a choir that she was coaching and she asked me to sing one of the songs she actually asked me to sing the song that I, I had sung by the corridor and I started singing it and then she said from now onwards you are going to be the leader of the choir and that choir was a senior choir everyone was um, was a senior and I was a junior so I started leading that choir it wasn't easy but hey you know I loved music so much that I just ended up enjoying leading the seniors. Well, parents, the words that we say to our children may pull them down or be a source of strength. We're taking a short break. Don't go away. At King George VI, Prudence started believing in herself and she has never looked back from the time her talent was discovered. I used to think oh, I was just someone who was not noticeable until I had to come to KG6. Prudence Mabena, she came to us as a little girl and she had a fairly troubled home back background. And soon after she came to KG6, she was actually taken away from school for a year because her family didn't want to send her to school. But we managed to get her back again. And it quickly became obvious that this little girl had an amazing voice. This was her special talent. So we got her to sing as often as possible. When most of the senior choir members graduated from the school, Prudence did not lose hope. Instead, she joined the school marimba band. At that time, we had a, a group of boys who had formed a marimba band. And Prudence became the singer for that band. And as she developed her voice, she became the leader of the band. She became the focus because this amazing voice just impressed everybody so much. I asked one of the, some of the guys that were in the choir to come and join the marimba. So we started experimenting. They would play marimbas and we would sing along the marimba. And then uh, the director of the school, Mrs. Hasi, heard us sing while the other guys were playing instrumentals, the, the marimbas and keyboards, and she enjoyed it. Then she called uh, this other man to come and coach us. One, two, three.
Having participated in competitions as the King George VI school band, the group won prizes to tour Sweden, Netherlands and Belgium and were told to look for a name. They decided to call themselves Liana, which means it's raining. Our band consisted of uh, eight members with disabilities who all had disabilities, different disabilities. Five of us used wheelchairs. Then two guys used crutches and then one was deaf. It wasn't about disability. To us, it was about what we carried, what was inside us. We showed the world that, you know what, don't look at me and judge me. Look through me, look inside me, because whenever we opened our mouths, everybody would come close. That's why we called ourselves Leah. We were part of a band um, that um, we were together in for a couple of years. Um, and um, we traveled quite a lot together, doing shows in and around Bulawayo, doing shows um, even out of Bulawayo. We did a couple of shows together as a band. Uh, she was the lead um, vocalist for the band. And um, people were very interested and intrigued by um, the way she she managed to vocalize everything, uh, the way she did, the way she performed, the way she um, nurtured herself, and the way she just was just so into the audience uh, during the time of every performance, and the way that she could um, get into each song. You know, we could get into a very vibrant song, into a into a slow song and the way she could just get into the song just made the audience just you know just love her and uh, it was quite an amazing journey Lot, even that when she she was bathing, you could tell down I right now for them she's in the shower, she's taking a bath. And with her singing, it really touched a lot of hearts. You know, it was quite touchy, quite inspirational, quite quite gifted. You could tell this person had a lot of a lot of uh, passion in singing. Whenever we got on stage, people would start talking. You know, some of them would even move away, go somewhere else, and they would. I'm sure in their hearts or in their minds, they would be telling themselves that ah, finish. Now we're going to be seeing this sort of group, you know. But when we started seeing, you would find everybody coming back. <laughs> When the musical journey started at the King George VI school in Blawayo, the young boys and a girl by the name Prudence 
never thought that they would conquer the world with their Zimbabwean traditional music, let alone for Prudence walking on the red carpet at the 2010 Oscar Awards ceremony in the USA. A documentary called Music by Prudence, produced by Roger on Prudence and the Liana Band, won an Oscar Award in 2010. In Zimbabwe, when a disabled child is born, the family thinks, oh, here comes a burden. Having won an Oscar award, her parents were at the airport to welcome her with pride and love. A talent united here with her parents. My mom and my dad were there when I went back home. They were there at the airport, you know, they were excited. They were, somehow I feel that they were shocked. They were there for, for about a week and some days. They explained more about their difficulties and why um, they had to separate. It was all because of my partner, grandma. Somehow it made me understand that maybe it was lack of knowledge. Leanna Bend disbanded in 2012 after three members relocated to the United States of America and some went on to work full-time at the King George VI school. The fact that music is part of me, I did not stop singing so I decided to go solo. I did uh, my first album in 2013. I've done four music videos. Uh, the four music videos were directed by Kudakwashe Doba who also has a disability in the cerebral pulse and also the one who did the filming of those videos has a disability as well, Anunzi Farai Mabande. He has a similar uh, disability with me, Anunzi Arthogryposis. Perhaps would want to know what drives you away from being a charity case and wanting to be a prudence who is independent, working and showcasing your talent out there in the world. Sometimes, Vamovano, they mistaken us. Kana Munari disabled, whether room town or somewhere, Munano to Bura Chukupamar, thinking with everyone with a disability, Anudamar. But personally, if we all had the same mindset, you would be through begging. They are not going to be as people with disabilities. There are some people out there with disabilities. 
muna ningori ne dzabvinite kuti gumbo raka raka hana gumbo but ane maoko ane makumbo ano taura ano ita zvese badya hadi kushanda guys ko ini no right tarisa ini ni zvandiri but still i don't want people to feel pity for me because mwari pa vakandisika ka vakandisika with a reason vakandisika to show his glory using me and i believe kuti that's why god gave me this voice vaito zia kuti probably ndikasamupa voice ira pana chimwe changa gobi kuti kushandisa kuti awane mari guys ka disability that way does not mean inability no matter kunze munhu doesn't have this doesn't have that but you always have a way to 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 work around disability yako prudence bemoaned the lack of working ramps on most music studios and performance stages and it is a wish for the persons with disabilities to be considered when these are built most studios are very tiny uh they cater for people with without disabilities <laughs> anenga mamacho they will be having steps they are upstairs they so for me to get up there it takes forever my stages essa they don't have ramps almost all stages when people um fix these stages they forget that there are persons with disabilities prudence in your journey of music where do you see yourself in the near future i see myself running a music studio Ininge she cater for people with disabilities. Ininge ine ma ramps. Ininge ine zvese. Zvinobatsira vanhu ane ma disabilities because I believe kuti there are so many people out there with disabilities. Vasinga gone ku kusvika to the level where I am right now because of these challenges that I went through. Vamwe vacho anengo achichika mwacho vari kutoleta down ne ma structures of the buildings prudence is inspired by two music geniuses whom she wants to meet if i could meet these two xq and japres ah mwari vane ngwanditira kungo vaona chete it's a blessing to me there you have heard for yourself japresa and xq prudence would like to meet with you and perhaps have a collab with you guys on the local tourism front prudence is keen to visit kariba i given an opportunity to travel locally hey i would love to go to um to kariba i've never been there but i've heard so many people talking about kariba so i would love to go and see what how it is how it looks like how beautiful it is the voice that someone wanted silenced for good regarded as an embarrassment to the family is now the pride of the family and the country she is the voice of the voiceless and she has indeed proved beyond reasonable doubt that disability is not inability it is surely by the amazing grace of the lord